All right, everybody, welcome back once again to another episode of the J Train Show. Playing for you some World of Warcraft. We'll get into why I'm doing that in a second, but I'm glad that I'm, you know, here again. I know it's been a while for the J Train Show. I've been launching another podcast to kind of keep you guys uh, up to date, uh, kind of give you more content. Um, but, you know, I had some people uh, approach me, say that we should do a podcast. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, has been on the J Train Show before. Her name's Caitlin, uh, but I also got friend James on here as well. Uh, they wanted to talk about some stuff that I've been posting about online. So, uh, yeah, how you guys doing? How you been? You, uh, you excited to be on my show? What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up, everybody? Uh, James is the crystal clear one because he like is like summoning some sort of like audio jutsu that gives him like crystal clear audio. Yeah. How much? How much did you have to pay for those headphones? Oh, you don't have to tell uh, me. Was it? Was it a lot? Was it a lot? This one expensive? wasn't. This one wasn't too bad. Uh, it's probably. I would say you know at le around at least a little bit over a hundred dollars. Wow, Easily, <laughs> my friend. He buys Turtle Beaches. Oh He's yeah. Like, God dang it! I spent one thirty, and they're not even. Oh, and then he's like, calls up customer support, like, "Yeah, we can't help you." He's like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> yeah, just... it, they get those get kind of ridiculous. You'll see some headphones in there that have like, "Oh, it's got seven point one virtual surround sound, and you know, it's it's only six hundred dollars, or you know, your arm or a leg." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, I, I'm I'm really happy with this mic. I've gotten a lot of use out of it, but it's like to to do it, I can't like just put it around my head. I have to like deep throat it. <laughs> You know what I'm doing? Like a, <laughs> when I'm doing a podcast all the time, you know. So, uh, but uh, how are things in 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 Austin, Kayla? This is the last time we uh, we talked. It's great. What's, what, what's what's winter like? I mean, I know that it was super hot. I think the last time we we did a show or whatever. But how what are winters like in Austin? Uh, it's like forty degrees now. Like today, for example, today we went out. And like I thought it felt 65. totally normal, but I looked around and everyone was wearing jackets and I was not wearing jackets because <laughs> I thought it yeah. felt fine. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was at least like 55 to 60 easily. And it wasn't that cold at all. Like if, if you just stood there and let the sun bake you for a little bit, you'll sweat <laughs> wearing a jacket. <laughs> so from what you guys are telling me, do these do these like Texas people like look at you guys like gods? Like, you know, superhumans that that have superhuman abilities that they've never seen before. It's like I know. <laughs> you're out in fifty degree weather, what? They in probably a, a, do. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Like my uh my work, you know, the uh all our cubicles, the air conditioning it blows and it blows pretty cold, but I'm just like, eh, it feels fine. But I see people wearing like hoodies, and this is the middle of the summer though. I'm like, why are you wearing a hoodie inside the building yeah, when right. as soon as you walk outside, it's sweltering? You <laughs> instantly will melt and die. <laughs> it doesn't oh, yeah. make any sense, and I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah, I mean, I walk around uh, Virginia because I, I hate um, I hate wearing like sleeve things or like pants or. Uh, or, or um, jackets and hoodies after I work out. So I just don't bring them to the gym. And the thing is, I only have to walk to my car and to the place. I'm like walking out and the wind's like blowing, it's like 20 some degrees and I'm just like walking into place and they're just like, oh, aren't you cold? And I'm, it's warm in here, you know, but I just can't stand. It. I don't know how you guys feel. Like I don't, I feel gross when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sticks to your body <laughs> everywhere and you feel like something's just it feels over awful. you. awful, <laughs> yeah. And like, it's not like you ever wash that stuff. So it's like you just accumulate the sweat. So I'm never going to just like wear that stuff to the gym. I, it's just so uncomfortable, man. Yeah, my friend recently was trying to convince me that, yes, it does snow in Texas. And she, fe for, she spent forever looking for this photo. She's like, it, it snowed feet. And I was like, it does not snow feet. And she showed me the picture, and you could still see the grass under the snow. Yeah, it's like a light dusting. And I was, like, I was like, I'm sorry to tell you, but that is not feet. <laughs> that is a dust. Thing. And she goes, the whole city shut down. <laughs> no, I believe it. Remember, remember when, like Atlanta, it looked like someone literally took like uh, what is it that powdered sugar and just sprinkled it on the roads, and they're like, catastrophe, 2016. Yeah. It's like every <laughs> everyone lock yourself in a ride aid. You're not going anywhere. Yep, that's it's a catastrophe it down here when it rains. 
Oh yeah, my god, right? it's rain. I gotta drive thirty miles per hour on on a highway it's where the speed limit's seventy. It's like, no, you don't. You can go maybe five miles per hour below, but you don't need to go thirty. <laughs> yeah, it's kinda like that over here, DC area. As soon as any like water touches the ground, it's like everyone sucks at drink. Yeah. But uh Yeah. But anyway, so I, 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 I get I'm getting off on a tangent. So you guys moved into a new house. I saw it I saw like, you know, the plans. I don't think I've ever I don't have you guys posted pictures of it on it on like any social media at all or no? No, nah, not really. I mean my mom has a picture of like me and Caitlin and her like at the front door. That's pretty much it. I had took a picture of like Caitlin's mother doing some of the backsplashing in the kitchen just saying hey look it's work in progress but other than that there's no legitimate pictures of like inside the house or even outside of the house it's like I, all personal basically yeah i don't like posting yeah, stuff I, like I that not... generally unless people like ask I'll, I'll like pm them something because i feel like it's like hey look at me i'm awesome like i don't want to do, i don't want to be like that so I tend to like not post a lot of pictures of things in uh, general. I thought it was because like, hey, this is the what my house looks like. This is the inside. This is where we keep the money. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> no, no, it's just because I don't like to like be like an asshole. Because I know most people look at pictures like that. You know, when friends post yeah. something and you're like, ugh, I hate them. Like, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be like that. So I'm like, well, if someone wants to see him, I'll send them a picture. But otherwise, I'm fine keeping it to myself. <laughs> Especially oh, man, for I... all those Northern Virginians. Yeah, yeah, Northern Virginia. I'd be like, oh yeah, check out this, check out this awesome house I got in Woodbridge, 1976. Got a hole in the center. We're gonna re, we're gonna reclaim that. I got this guy who likes to randomly walk around and touch the bars outside my window. But you know, it's, I'm living life right now. Everyone got yeah. their own place. <laughs> <laughs> or like, think of my house. It's connected to you know a row of six houses, and <laughs> there's no garage. All I have is one single parking spot that has a number on it. But someone parks in it anyways. So I'm like, all right, I'll park over over here, I guess. <laughs> Only cost me four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Oh my god! Uh, when I told people like down here about how much just a regular house costs up there, they actually don't believe me at all. Dude, yeah. Just go on, just go on Zillow. Yep, Go that's what I, I have done that at work plenty of times. I was like, this is where I used to live at in Fairfax. And it's, you know, this little apartment right here, you know, 720 foot square foot for like, who knows, close to $1,600 a month. And across the street, here's a here's a townhouse. It's about 1,800 square foot. It's $800,000 to buy, you know. And they're like, what? I'm like, here's Zillow. Here's the street where I lived. Here's the townhouses across the street. That's how much they cost. I think it's like Willow, Willow's Oak or something. It's by the uh, the Fair Lakes Best Buy, like right behind it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like alive. it's like it's like believe it or not, guys. I got a deal for only four hundred eighty thousand dollars. I only have an hour and a half commute to work, <laughs> or two <Yeah>. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. so okay, so I'm a person who like the next move I want, I want it to be into something I own. I want to build equity. I want to just piss away money into like you know someone else's like apartment who's just gonna keep you know I, I want to build income or whatever. So I'm I, before we get into like I guess the meat and potatoes of this podcast, I really want to ask you guys like what steps you took to like I guess start buying a house. Like did you have to save up like a ton of money? Was it was it hard? Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> like, <definitely. laughs> like, yes. like how, how long did it, how long did it take you guys to save up the money? It's kind of hard because. Like, yeah. When did you know you were going to buy a house, and then what steps did you need to take once you decided this is what I want to do? So first, first, well, I'm not going to lie. Some of the money was help, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of James has been saving since he started working, like when he was like 16. Oh, uh, look, smart man! Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. Look at this guy. So it was basically, <laughs> it takes like your entire life savings. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Good. That's that's okay. So take. take I know. Your I'm not. I I have. I'm not uh, making this any better. I know. Take your yeah. entire life savings. I have an Xbox. Can I liquefy that? But see, the, <laughs> the thing is, it, that it, won't even make a it's dent. Really, it's really. <laughs> it's really different buying a new house and buying an old house and. 
why we chose to buy a new house here. It, it's very different here because most of the houses out here are new because it's not as developed as where you are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's easier like, to just get a new house. Unless you're going then, like Southwest Austin or some downtown area, um, you know, you're either going to find a dumpy house and I mean, dumpy or you'll find a house that's like decent but it costs way too much because of the proximity where it's at and they're not building any new houses in those areas they're all around austin so like the leander cedar park manor uh just everything i mean we got people at my work who live like in kyle and san marcos and those are we're talking about maybe without traffic you're looking at oh, oh like about an hour of drive probably possibly and i mean and the, the reason for that is because uh the housing markets here it's is booming and people are, are you know the influx of people coming into austin you're, you're getting people who have where they come from not a lot of money but when they come to austin a lot of money like the californians they they used to roll in here like oh man back where i'm at you know just like northern virginia too the houses are like one million eight hundred thousand i barely make anything and they come here with like 200 300 maybe four hundred thousand dollars already to put down as a down payment mm -hmm. for some of these houses that cost a hundred ninety thousand especially like five years ago some of the houses right down the street like the house that you stayed at when you came over those houses five maybe 10 years ago were like a hundred thousand. Now they're selling them for like four five, 600,000 in a matter of less than a decade easily. And so a lot of the housing market now is just like, well, we're going to build a bunch of communities outside. There's no room to really build them inside. And plus um, it's easier to build it a little bit further out, but not quite in and make mass quantities of it because then you can keep that flux of people coming in to have actual homes for them to buy like they can't make enough homes for the people coming in right now it's like oh uh we can't sell any houses because we don't have any more we got to build more and they're building i mean building fast when we Man. first uh settle for our house in where we're at right now uh they only had phase one uh that was partially almost complete and there was phase two which is where they were trying to point us towards like oh you can go to the phase two there was nothing there it was just all dirt and a bunch of signs to say, hey, these are all plots. And I decided, we'll go, well, you have a couple in phase one. And we we're like, purposely, we we're like, we would spend the extra money just to put the house there because one, all the houses around you would already be built. So you wouldn't hear as much construction around you versus phase two where they're just building houses everywhere. Well, already within six months, they have a third phase and a fourth phase and there's houses there like already being built i'm like yeah this is this is quick this is yeah. this is going somewhere <laughs> oh man i really so, want to i really want to move out there what, what were you gonna say i'm sorry i was gonna say so also what he's trying to say is we didn't want to buy an old house and because californians have so much to put on a down payment what happens is you get in a bidding war and they uh, always win. they always win the old houses they always win them yeah. so if you buy so why a would new you, house why would it's yours. You don't bid for it. You just say, "This is mine. I'm buying it." And then oh, they really? build it for you. Yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like a little contract. It's kind of like a uh, um go into a dealership and like i want to order a car. It's like the same thing. You're like, "I want to order a house." So you put <laughs> you put um I think it's called honest money towards earnest. Yeah, earnest towards uh kind of like a like a I guess like a deposit basically. And you're like, Oh, I'm going to put this much towards this plot. And it pretty much locks you in so that even if the housing market increases. So like when we got our house, by the time we actually moved into it, most of the houses around us already had increased by like almost seven grand. So I mean, <laughs> Jeez. already we're like crazy geez. equity. Yeah. You guys are gonna be able to reach it, man. Maybe I should get into the Austin housing market. I, I visited a friend in Detroit and I, <laughs> I, I really want to get into some Detroit property like investments because I'm telling you what, they're dropping breweries and stuff there. And once you see a brewery drop, start buying, start, start buying property. Yeah. Yeah, that means yep. the hipsters are moving in. Hips, yeah, hipsters. Yep. Like, say what you will about them. 
They mm-hmm. gentrify the F out of places. Oh, yeah. They can change a whole crappy looking town into this awesome town, like, real fast. Like, yeah, and then the awesome town kicks them out. <laughs> like, no. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, hey. uh, Brooklyn, how all the hipsters are taking it back. It's like, yeah. what in the world? <laughs> like, what's yeah. going on here? <laughs> so, getting back to what you should do, well, first of all, you have to save a lot of money. A lot. Like, yeah. like, uh, like, like did, even, did you say, like, to, to put it into perspective, like a thousand dollars is not even going to change your mortgage, like at all, like your monthly payment. You need your your monthly payment won't even it'll change when you start getting to the tens of thousands. Yeah. So like every five thousand, you're probably looking at a good chunk off, but it's only like a few tens of dollars off. Like, oh, it's about twenty three or maybe thirty or forty dollars off your monthly payment. But yeah, you got to do within you gotta have like a five thousand mark so like if you're gonna be putting 10 you probably want 15 if you want a 20 you want a 25 like you want to push more in there because when we were able to see what we can afford for a house down here don't I was say like, any well, numbers on yeah something. i won't but i'm just saying like we i was like all right well if i push just a few more thousand here just a few more you know we can really get in there and the other the one reason the factor was that was because you can with most of these mortgages you can buy points which lowers the apr and you actually in the long run save way more money doing that way than like a full front just here's this sum and i'm not going to buy any points versus i'm going to buy four points and then you know it's kind of like you're paying the money like right now like oh here's the money that would have been interest now and you decrease how much you're putting down as or down uh putting down as a down payment but you're decreasing how much you pay over time uh which is what we were decided to do so we had to like rearrange some things and just did some more savings here and there just so we could get more points off <laughs> Uh-huh. You can get your interest. You can pay to have your interest rate lower. Oh, yeah. is that what it is? So, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, a question. I, another qu- maybe two questions I have. The first question is like, I don't know if you guys did this or if you know the answer to this, but first question is like, can you use like, if you're like a first time like buyer, like someone was saying something like you can use like your four hundred one k towards like your your down payment, uh, and then one person said you have to like pay that back another person told me like you you don't necessarily have to do that and the second question is like how how close to your what it says your mortgage payment will be is it actually like legit like so if so if a house is saying like oh mortgage payment is going to be like 1200 a month or whatever like how much different is it than so, like like a lot let different me explain or explain that let okay. me explain let me explain it because i'll be shorter than james but <laughs> um <laughs> snap <laughs> <laughs> so the 401k thing, no, we didn't do that. So I'm not sure the answer to that question. Okay. I had one person, I have one friend who told me they cashed out their 401k and then used it as a down payment. But ah. I don't really understand how you would put your 401k towards it. That doesn't really make sense to me. So I don't really know the answer to that question. Yeah, I'm, I might I might have no idea what I'm talking we, about. Yeah, we didn't do that. But I know someone that cashed theirs out and then used it. But yeah, that might be it, actually. I don't know. Um, then also, an, I don't... Then another <laughs> answer to that question, I don't really know the whole mortgage thing because what was really bizarre about ours is so we got ours in the summer, so we haven't even been there a full year. And it it also depends on your taxes. So your your mortgage is your, you know, your payment, your principal and interest, which is to the actual house. And then the other part of it is um, your taxes. And which insurance. Is a big chunk of it. And mm. insurance. So those three things. And your insurance. It all goes in one payment. Jesus. Yeah. And so I- so the tax, what's bizarre about our house is when we bought it and we went to sign the paperwork, the, the estimated monthly payment was way lower than we thought. And we were like, why is it way lower? And they told us because it's a new house that we were only going to be taxed on the land for the, the first plot. year. Oh. So mm. it's supposed to go up next year. So we don't really know how much it'll go up because then you also don't really know the taxes. But 
it's supposed to be pretty accurate. They're supposed to get it really accurate for you. They're not going to be like telling you, oh, your mortgage is only going to be a thousand dollars, and then you sign it, and then they're <laughs> going to charge you two thousand. That's, that's Just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's not going to happen because that would be insane. But ours is pretty weird, and I think it was only a Texas thing because I've told people in Virginia about that whole only paying on the lot the first year, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. So. I think the reason is because they probably don't have a lot of new homes up there, because all the new stuff that they're building is always townhouses and condominiums. There's no, like, real houses unless you're, like, in Percival, you know, a good mm-hmm. 30 miles away from the D.C. line just to get an actual house. I mean, there was people in my last job when I was in Virginia that were buying homes, like, little bit outside of martinsburg or west virginia and driving like an hour or so uh, to go to work in leesburg so it's kind of like what in the world what but, kind of like reality do you have to live in to be like yeah i need to move to west virginia well i mean we had a guy that actually lived in i think he was either williamson williamsburg richmond area and he drove three hours to work and three hours back home Wow. Yeah, and he did an overnight job because it would avoid all forms of traffic so that it would be literally a three-hour drive. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, that's a little insane. Yeah. So when you're uh, looking at a house, you got to calculate you know, your mortgage, your insurance, how much are the taxes in that area you're looking, and then that'll give you a better pay- monthly payment. Yeah, so like if you're looking at like a mortgage calculator – you know, you probably want to put, obviously put like, oh, if it has like the tax part in there, you put like the state in there. And even with the state, it varies by county. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, every Thank thank you guys for, for letting me know, for, for letting me know how far out I am from ever making this a reality and just how much <laughs> money I'm going to have to save for the rest of my life. Just save okay. a few hundred a month, you know. I'm <laughs> sitting in Oregon. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh uh, man, you need that left kidney. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start breeding some like rabbits or something and just sell them. Rabbits. Like, these, these are these are exotic Northern Virginia rabbits. <laughs> Pay me a thousand dollars for each rabbit. This I is think... a long-eared cat. <laughs> Don't yes. find it. It looks like a bunny, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna spend them all that money to, to travel. And speaking of traveling, uh, I went. I went to New York. Um in October for New York Comic Con and you two are veterans of New York Comic Con. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, and you know, the wedding was great and everything, but I had to cut short because of like the wedding and stuff, but uh it was it was it was really uh great. Are you guys thinking about going next year at all or I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if we would go next year if we're doing Cuz after after a while you guys have like cuz you guys said you went like multiple times, right? I think we went what maybe two or we three went, times i can't remember we went twice and like we've only been think, twice do you think you saw everything that you needed to see like do you think it could ever get different and you'd be like yeah let's 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 go again or something i think that four days is enough mm-hmm. uh but every i mean every year is different so yeah i mean I, I would want to go back um it would cost more this time around. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we're not we here it anymore. We would have to fly or something. You guys don't want to take the train from Austin to New York? Oh, you can, you, can, drive. you guys can go through Little Rock again. <laughs> oh, no. Arkansas was... Oh. <laughs> She's got PTSD from Arkansas, dude. I actually, I actually, because of her, looked up like home prices in Little Rock, and I'm like... Oh, hmm, these are not that expensive, but it's Arkansas. Exactly. <laughs> Never mind. These <laughs> houses look kind of depressing. But um, yeah, I mean, like Comic Con was great. So, I'm what I would do. Uh, there were people, and I want to see if I can convince my friends to do this. Just go to these conventions and just stock up on exclusive Funko Pops and just resell them. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that stuff. The, yeah, the and next door. Yeah. As me and Caitlin saw before, the very first day, Thursday, there's a Square Enix store. And I mean, as soon as the Thursday pass holders or the four-day pass holders were inside the building and they released the show floor, they're like, all right, you can go up. It was like a huge like stampede to the Square Enix store because there's people there. I mean, kid you not, from 
California who went to San Diego that said, I was waiting in line for like an hour or two to try to get this Square Enix crazy Mass Effect action figure, and they didn't have any. So now I'm here in New York trying to pick it up, and I'm going to buy like three of them so I can resell a couple and keep one for myself. I'm like, geez, these are like $100 action figures or more, and you're going to buy yeah. three off the bat already? And I mean... They swarmed it. It was it was pretty well, people, insane, dude. People resell it. I was at I was at you know um, I was looking around at like these vendors that um, and I forgot the name of the big Funko Pop vendor, who, like resells this stuff. And I remember when I was at San Diego Comic Con in 2013, I saw this White Ranger Funko Pop, and I was like, I bet you it's gonna be worth something. Uh, and it says Comic Con exclusive, and I still have it, mint condition, from when I like got it and everything. Six hundred bucks without the dude's yep. autograph on it. Yeah, and, uh, and he always goes to conventions, so I'm gonna wait for him to go to another one. I'm gonna bring it. You talking about Jason Frank? It. Yeah. Oh and yeah, like, he's always at cons. Yeah, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him to like sign it, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, awesome, cool, and it, it's gonna be. I don't know if I'd resell it, but dude, you could make a. And, but I want to know like how they divvy up the stuff because it's like one per person, and you have to convince your friends. Like, exactly. I mean, do, do, do you have to like split if, it? It's such a pain to get things that are that exclusive. Like uh, one of the uh, New York Comic Cons we went to, it was before Guardians of the Galaxy came out. And, but like, I'm a fan of Rocket Raccoon. I like, like, because of my job and stuff, I just like animal like type yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, so I already right. liked Rocket Raccoon. And the Marvel store had a Rocket Raccoon exclusive, like, big stuffed animal. And mm -hmm. I was like, I want that. It, it was 50 bucks, but I was like, I want it. Cause I really like rocket raccoon. I yeah. waited like three hours to get one. Yeah. I waited in line for five hours to meet Jason, David Frank and uh, get him to sign the pop. And then I this... waited just to buy an item. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, so exactly. I almost don't want to resell. It resells for hundreds of dollars, but I'm almost like, I waited so long to get this. Exactly. Do I really want to resell? The <laughs> second, the second I posted it on on uh, on 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 Facebook, and and if my friends listening to this, uh, you know who you are. Uh, I I I I mean no ill content or ill will against this or you or anything. But the second I posted, like, yo, call me up. What do you want for it? And I'm just like, dude, I waited for five hours for the, for, <laughs> for, for for this thing. You're gonna have to really. He's just like. Well, well, how much? How much was it? And I was like, "It's like twenty bucks." Like, I'll give you twenty bucks. And I'm like, F you. "No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, you got to pay for my time sitting yeah. there and waiting." Exactly. And I have to mention the up the the up value of it. How much it's worth from when you go to like eBay or some other sites. <laughs> I can go to eBay and double the price of this. The quadruple, qu quintuple the price of this yeah. immediately. And it's like, look, I, I love you, man, but like. You weren't in the trenches and you knew this was coming and it's like if you if you were here with me and stuff like that we'd be like working some stuff out but it's like you know you have no like i had to run through people i had to smell nerds it, you know like oh, i had they always, it always yeah. smells really bad at convention that's another problem with yeah convention. wear deodorant that is the biggest it tip really... for anyone that goes yeah please wear deodorant please take a shower it and always be there's always people that smell really bad and I'm not trying to be mean, but it's just a fact. Yeah. And it's, it's like the running joke of every con it just people smell and it, and there's a reason for it. Cause it's true. <laughs> it's just, it's literally true. And all these people got to be like cognizant of their social prowess and the volume to which they speak, I guess, you know, cause there were like some people there, like there's one guy was like, Oh, that's an awesome one punch man. Like, uh, you know, costume or or cosplay or whatever, and then he just would not stop talking, and he's just so annoying. I was just like, stop, get out of here. And it, it was the Stan Lee line, so the Jason David <laughs> Frank line was like long, but Stan Lee, because it was like his last one. Yeah. yeah, I was in that thing for an eternity, and like I knew this was gonna happen, but it's like the dude didn't even like lift his head up or anything, or like want to like talk to you at all. And I I remember I was just like. Hey, Mr. Lee, I really appreciate you coming out. And I think he said something like, as you should. And I'm just like, what? Bro. What? I just he paid... said that? Yeah, and I was just like, dude, I just I just paid this money to have you sign something and oh, everything. And no, like that's really and, sad. Well, well that's, that's the thing what I tell people. I'm like, look, if you ever have the opportunity to meet people like you like, like 
be careful if you actually want to do that because like it it you know i think he was trying to make a joke i don't think he meant any ill will by it and i think I, i'm not sure that's what he said because he's an old guy so like when he speaks it's like i don't sometimes it sounds like maybe he's saying something different but like uh just be careful because these people are like regular human beings and stuff and they're just not gonna have like the same context that you have and like a lot of times they might for example, like William Shatner, when I when I met him, I'm not a huge Star Trek guy, I'm not a huge Shatner guy, but I could see how like meeting him could ruin Star Trek for you. Right. Certain people I've been I've never really had a really bad experience with meeting the people. I've had really bad experiences with their like bodyguards and things like that. Like yeah, yeah. yelling at people, like just nasty stuff like that. But I have been surprised like certain people that I wasn't ex- Expecting to find as personal like for example when we met uh coed and cambria well i've met them multiple times <laughs> you love it um one of like the first times we met him i was surprised at how much i liked josh their drummer he's the nicest out of all of them actually mm-hmm. he's super charismatic he's just like he wants to take photos with everyone he's like come on guys i love it i love he I was just surprised by that because you like you go there and like you really want to talk to Claudia like the front man but I was like man Josh is really cool and so you just you get those surprises that stick with you so I'm always like oh Josh is the best what is Claudia like he's He's, nice he's nice he's kind of quiet I I, we came across him at his own booth and it's funny he wears a hoodie so he keeps his hair out so you can't like spot him like you know just oh, boom, right. there he is you right. know but i knew it was him i was like oh crap he's right here and he was just talking to a couple of people which is kind of weird he's outside of his booth like as he was visiting his own booth so he wasn't behind it he was outside of it and um i guess he was just getting ready for something and he was just talking to a bunch of people there and i was just joking with him i just walked up to him i was like hey man I was like, uh, I love that one comment you did, Kill Audio. And I just joked to him. I was like, I love how it's title Kill Audio, as if it's your your name, right? Claudio. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he started just, la- he lost it. He couldn't stop laughing at that. He was just like, that is great. He's like, he even said, he was like, I was like that's the first time I've ever seen, like, actually <laughs> seen someone actually mention this to me. Yeah, and then, cool. But yeah, he was he. But he's kind of. I think he's kind of shy in a way. He's kind of quiet. Like when he, we he kind of strikes get, me. Yeah, when we went into like the line, like this is twice, you know, to get some stuff signed. Um, it was him and his wife, and then we came back. I guess um, it was either him and his wife the day after, but the first time was I think the whole band, and yeah, he was he was kind of quiet and kind of shy on 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 both occasions, and his his wife uh is at the booth a lot of the times like so you can actually just like walk up to her most of the time and just be like hey when's he coming or can you sign this because she obviously does some writing as well uh i think also for kill audios i don't know if she does any of the the other comics though but i can't say too much for the other two the new bases I get confused. I think he was, I think he was super am, shy. Am I, <laughs> he's, he's Zach, right? I get confused. Am I confused? Zach is the bassist, not the drummer. I get the drummer and the bassist confused. Now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> so there's obviously Claudio and Travis, and which Travis, are the main, yeah. They're the main guitars. You know, they're like the band practically. Um, the drummer, they had a, a couple of drummers every once in a while, and that's Josh. Okay, I think that's why I get confused because they yeah. switch drummers multiple times. But... Yeah, and they and they only I only I don't know if they swap bases that many times, but they swap bases like twice. I think, yeah, but... and I, and I know anyway, Josh. It, I think it's... was the original drummer, and he left, and he came back, and then the bases, the original bases or whatever, he did something stupid, and they were just like, we can't really have you in the band, so they kind of like kind of kicked him out. I think he, he was, was like. Yeah, Foxy. <laughs> yeah. That's I think what Oxycontin it was. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't really mean that. I didn't no, mean that. No, it's funny. <laughs> but, I mean, like, we don't want to you know, a Caitlin has, that Caitlin. was kind of decent. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's what happened. Ka- like, Caitlin has my, a way. My bluntness. <laughs> yeah, you have a way of saying things and laughing that can make anything, like, comical. Like, I don't ever want to bring you to a funeral. 
It's like it's like can you imagine can, see like because she would do that like she would like would be like if everyone loved joy, she loved petting, uh, she loved petting squirrels, and then she'll just like, laugh and, I'm like, and then I'll be like and then I'll just be like they were on drugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's or, or like or like they'll be like it's like he was taking weight way too late like before his time he was he was in case like he was on drugs and then and then she's like she's also very upfront she's like what that's what it was he friggin' injected himself and he died that's what happened it's like caitlin calm down she's like fine God. <laughs> I think that's why people don't like me very much. I don't know. Like you're you're just so much fun. Like when I went to Austin, I was like, I can't man, I missed out on a lot of like hanging out with Caitlin because she would have made like a lot of my days just like better because like she she's like she makes everything like just so funny and like entertaining and everything. So <laughs> thank you, know. you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But uh yeah, I, even unboxing things, right, Caitlin? <laughs> Unboxing things like for your... what? <laughs> nah, no see, idea what that's you... part. This morning when we were just unboxing, you know, a furniture piece, <laughs> I'm just like, look at this. I love watching this. The struggle is real, and she's like, no. <laughs> 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 she just couldn't open this box, and I'm just sitting here watching. They're like, "This is entertaining." <laughs> oh, she had issues opening the box, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It was great. <laughs> Probably wow. pissed off, is it? but um. <laughs> What else? So like Kai Green was at New York Comic Con too, Who's and that? Uh, so if you're he's he's like the number two bodybuilder in the world, but probably oh, okay. my f- my favorite bodybuilder. And I had no idea he was gonna be there. It makes sense now because like he's like into comics and stuff, and he like uh, you know he lives in New York. But I was like walking around, and I like actually took a wrong turn, and I was like, oh man, where am I at? And I saw like King Kai, and I was like, King Kai, what is th- what is that? And I like. Looked down, I was like, oh, oh, my, oh my god, because I've been like watching this guy for like ever, and like I like really just a lot of the stuff that he does, like I incorporate in like my workouts and stuff, and I'm just like, what, 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 what? and I'm just like, and then like another bodybuilder who I know, Victor Martinez, just rolls up, and like, hey, what's up, Constance? Is this real life right now? What? Oh my god, what, what is going on? And I like, I met him, and like I, almost, I was like almost tearing up, like talking to him. Actually, yeah, you won't be so surprised. So how? Who's there? How was yeah. he- how was Sorry. what? No, how was yeah. what? How was yeah. meeting them? Like, were they oh, awesome? Man. So, so like... Kai is like a, a 12 out of 10. Like, he'll talk to you for 20 minutes if you want to. I'm not even, oh, like, nice. hitting. And, like, he's... I, if he's acting, he's really good at it, but he just looks super invested. Like, I just went up to him, and I was just like... My first words were, you're such a freaking inspiration. And he just, like, looked at me like, whoa, was not expecting. And I was just like, dude, thank you so much for, like, all the stuff that, you know, put out, man. Like, you're just great. And, like, all this stuff. And he's just like, thank you so much, man. And, like, took a picture. And I was like, I've been trying to get on train with Kai for, like, ever. And he just, and he just turns to his, like, guy holding the camera. He's like, yeah, get his email. Let's do it. And, I, and I mean, he hasn't contacted me, but... It's okay. Um, it was still really cool, like meeting him and everything. That that actually became the highlight of the trip. And I met the Green Ranger. I met Stan Lee. Um, all this. Uh, I met friggin' Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Um, but oh, that was because cool. it was like because it was like unexpected. It's like when I was at San Diego Comic Con, like I, I I saw Lou Ferrigno, who uh, played the Incredible Hulk, and uh, right. I just remember like walking. And again, I was surprised because I don't expect these bodybuilders to be at these places. Like the first thing that he said to me was like, you know. Oh man, bro, we need to work out sometime. You're, you know, and like I was just so taken <laughs> because he he competed in the Olympia, and like him yeah. like saying that to me just was like an emotional thing for me. Like, I actually had to sit down, and like just yeah. like collect myself after having the Incredible Hulk, you know, fr- friggin' pumping iron Lou Ferrigno say that to me. <laughs> you know, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it is. But before before we run out of time because we're like at the forty minute yeah. mark now. Uh, you guys, okay. so, so you went to BlizzCon and this is like, a, this was like, you, you did this for James. Like, yes. like this was like the James, like on a scale of like cons, right? Like what, what was BlizzCon for you? Like paint the picture for my audience. Like how important <laughs> was going to BlizzCon for you? Which by the way, like this guy, if anyone in Blizzard is listening, <laughs> this guy it needs to be in your marketing department because he just is like trying to sell the f out of your products. Like he, he 
He's just like, bro, have you played this game? Play it. It's so great. Blizzard does everything great. I'm going to name my first kid Blizzard. <laughs> and just like, okay, man, Blizzard, cool. Blizzard, middle name, <laughs> Ink. Not even incorporate just Ink, I-N-C. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm surprised if he, if he if he doesn't have a Blizzard tattoo somewhere in his body, he's getting one at some point, I'm telling you. <laughs> Like the second after I was done talking to him about Blizzard, I bought stock in Blizzard. <laughs> I was like, I'm not kidding. I have stock in Blizzard Activision. I was like, James, you make some fine points. Let me go on to E Trade and open up an account. Are you serious? Yeah. Hey, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, Blizzard Activision, they got the Call of Duty franchise and then they got all the Blizzard franchise. So you, it's, you it's, guy? you know what I'm talking about? That's, that's a lot of money right there <laughs> to be rolling on your, uh, rolling okay, on your label. So, Where did his so, love for Blizzard come from, Kate? Oh, pff, since I was born, practically. I mean, uh, I mean, if you think about it, Blizzard's an old company, so they did their 25th anniversary. Uh, well, at this con, and it's also their 10th, 10th uh, con. So it was like their 10th anniversary for BlizzCon for itself. At the same time, it was also the 20th anniversary for Diablo One. So it was kind of intense. It's like whoa, all these anniversaries. Which is kind of, you know, it's like, and then you start realizing, yeah, it makes about sense because I was extremely young. I'm talking about like probably, I don't even remember, like 10, 11 years old or whatever when Warcraft 1 came out for the PC. So that was like the first game I got really from them. I mean, I had some games before those games, mm -hmm. but that was like, that's like the game that made Blizzard like just put their name completely out there and now people know who they are um yeah i wish they would make another warcraft uh RTS. yeah i know right <laughs> make a make a warcraft rts that encapsulates everything that happened in world of warcraft basically yeah, it's like oh exactly. here we go let's, uh, let's knock these out but no like warcraft one came out i play that a lot and then you know eventually the warcraft 2 and diablo series came out and then um shortly after that the one that really start to make people realize yeah we everyone knows blizzard that's great but now i really want to get into blizzard was like starcraft you know everyone i mean oh, right, high yep. school high school and middle school it was just diablo 2 and starcraft every night practically that's all like me and most of my friends did it was just like all right man we're gonna do a ladder match in starcraft and then you know you get your ass whipped a couple times by the Koreans as usual, and you're just like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to Diablo two and just just kill the crap out of something right now. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but yeah, like like I pretty much grew up with Blizzard games. I mean, obviously you have the Nintendo and you have the Sega games, and I grew up with them as well. But like just Blizzard was the Blizzard. one. Yeah, it's not about the Blizzard games. Like I always love Nintendo and Sega games. I mean, and Square Enix just putting that out there but for some reason like blizzard always kept you in there i think their storytelling was just too good and they always like to try to up the ante every time they release something so it's i don't know i mean it's pretty it's pretty intense right. but yeah the con was insane like we <laughs> you but get there caitlin, so caitlin did you drive oh yeah we yeah. drove okay who, who, did, did both of you switch off because one of my dreams in life was to see the grand canyon ah, and i knew ah. it, it, that's what this really was james way, but we yeah, had to go kind of on the way we had to go a couple hours out of the way so we made like a road trip out of it which the grand canyon was phenomenal it was amazing it's definitely now, worth the hype now let me about the grand canyon so here's what i like about the grand canyon i think you can tell me how true it is um if you go to niagara falls it's mm -hmm. awful in the sense that it that it's commercialized like crazy. Right. But since since the Grand Canyon is like what a national park or a national like site, yes. there you're not yeah. allowed to do that. So like, how natural was it? Um. So basically, if you're well, they have the touristy areas, but you know, at the at the rim and stuff where you stand at the top and they have railings and stuff. But because the Grand Canyon is the Grand Canyon, it, it's so massive. Um, you can take trails down in. So, you know, if you're more adventurous, you know, it it's, can be really hardcore. So yeah. it's kind of one of those places that there's something for everyone. Like if you're older and, or like a, if you have kids, then you're probably just going to want to see it and then leave. But mm -hmm. if you're like me and you're like, I'm going to try to hike this shit, 
<laughs> yeah, you can like go below the rim, and it's pretty. People die every year. I mean, it, it's did you try to hike rugged. it or anything? Like, what did you do? Uh, <laughs> so we did. <laughs> so this is how it went because we only had one day to do this. It wasn't like we. There are people that go to the Grand Canyon prepared. Because they're like, mm. this is the only reason I came here. I'm staying days. And uh, so we only had one day. So we get there and we look around and then we decide, well, let's try to do one of the hikes, like go below the rim. And I knew ahead of time, I was like, you you can't go to the bottom because it takes like a whole day and you have to camp out there. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah so you can't you can't do that so what we were gonna try to do was try this one trail and get to the first checkpoint and then go and then back turn, turn around which so, should have taken like about four to six hours of like total total like hike to and back from the uh the first checkpoint which is like i think it's only like a mile and like one mile and like three quarters or something i don't know it's not that far if you think about it but they're saying that going from the checkpoint back up takes you like double the time <laughs> the oh. terrain is very extreme oh, uh, yeah. you're going along the side of a cliff and there's only two people wide and there's no railings no nothing so if you mm -hmm. slip and you fall over the edge you're dead um wow. might survive in some so, way, but... <laughs> yeah you're we're working our way down and like i just I just started getting really dizzy. Mm -hmm. And James was making fun of me, but <laughs> I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty up for anything. Like I don't get scared easily. And right. because I kept feeling I just kept feeling really lightheaded and I kept sitting down like on the trail, I was like, I gotta turn around. I was huh. like, if I pass out or something and you're gonna be falling for a while. You'd have to, you'd have to get a <laughs> helicopter to take you out. You can't. There's no saving you. You. Or it's a not mule. like. There's no stepping off the trail and like you know quitting. There's no quitting. You have to turn around and go back. You still have to go all the way back up. So we turn around and went back. But I was still proud of myself for making it as far as I did. And because most people don't even attempt that, those trails and things like yeah. that. And, the trail was a uh, bright angel trail was the one that we were trying to do. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're actually weren't even that far from, it turned out that we weren't even that far from the checkpoint. All we had to do was go down this one bank and it's like super, it's kind of super steep, but it's really long and it goes off to the right and it goes, straight down and boom it's like it's right there but when we took that one turn she's like all right we got it she's like we gotta go i was like i'm just too dizzy i was like all right we'll just go let's go <laughs> that because yeah, right. we already knew at that altitude. point yeah you get altitude sickness so i yeah. i also wonder if the change in altitude was a bothering me because it wasn't from like looking down like it was something else i just felt really weird yeah mm -hmm. i mean like, the got, altitude go difference back. like uh, austin's like 317 feet or whatever when we the hotel that we were staying at that was like an hour drive from the uh grand canyon was in flagstaff and it's like you know over seven thousand feet mm -hmm. In altitude, so you went from 300 to 7,000, almost 7,500, basically. Because I think it was like 730 or like 7,300, 7,400. We were just like, geez. I could tell you driving from there to California, though. Oh, man, my brain. The pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Going down in altitude. Going down the altitude. Oh, so man. Much. And then it's kind of rocky because obviously Rocky Mountains and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it was like up, then down, up, then down. You'll see like these markers, You're like 1,000, and then 2,000, and then 3,000, then 4,000, and then back down to three. And I was like, oh, cr and then you just feel the pressure. My ears were like ringing for like the first at least day when we finally got to anaheim i was just like man who is oh, so <laughs> killing another me another <laughs> interesting fact when you go over the border from arizona into california <laughs> both ways they do it like you're going into another country they'll have oh, a checkpoint really? and the drug sniffing dogs come out and walk around your car and they ask you oh, if you're a citizen no. when we're leaving 
And when we were going into California, they asked us where we came from and if we had any fruits or vegetables. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure Texas and California have about the same vegetation because it looked yeah. the same to me. <laughs> they look exactly the same to me when we're from Austin to Anaheim. The weather, they're everything was like identical. Sure. They're <laughs> trying to make sure did. we didn't go to Mexico and we were bringing stuff back. But they, they have guess. dogs and everything. I was like, where the hell are we? Aren't we still in America? <laughs> I thought this was America. Yeah, it's like, when yeah, because we don't have that shit over in Virginia. I'm like, what when, the fuck is this? When I was over in Estonia and like Finland, I did this thing and I think I was annoying. I was definitely annoying my cousin with it, but I, hopefully I wasn't annoying like the Finns and the Estonians. But every time something was different, I was like, I thought this was America. I would just, <laughs> I would just scream it. I guess it didn't help so that then, like Jane. Oh, go ahead. Oh. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I guess it wasn't helping that like James was wearing a sombrero, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't question us at all. So then we uh, we get to BlizzCon. Well, we get to Anaheim. We didn't really explore that area because, you know, we were spending the whole time at BlizzCon. Is Anaheim yeah, that place and... you would like to stay? Like, would you ever want to stay in Anaheim? And no. I mean, it, was, it <laughs> wasn't a bad area. It was nice. But the thing is, was like, <laughs> what made it, what made it like, Semi dreadful was, you know, trying to get a hotel was insane before, you know, you even went. Like, all oh, the tickets are on sale. Get a hotel now. It's going to be a year from here. There is none. Oh, that's great. So, our hotel was 1.8 miles away from the Anaheim Convention Center. So, we had to walk 1.8 miles from the hotel to it. And then, when we left, 1.8 miles back to the hotel not to mention it's a convention center so you're already walking the whole day anyway so i mean <laughs> it's just oh, walking, it's next you know. to disneyland so all yeah, the people staying at disneyland. disneyland are there so tip if you ever plan on going to blizzcon book a hotel before the tickets even go on sale because worse you can just cancel them because they really do go that fast I mean, yeah. I was clicking on hotels like crazy trying to find yeah. just one that was available, and none of them are. So you have to, you uh, literally have to wait for the announcement of when it happens because it's going to be before they sell the tickets. And not only that, it's not always the same time of the year. Oh, uh, okay. So, what, how was it? Was it worth it? Like, was BlizzCon worth it? Yeah. Like, what were some of the greatest things? It's pretty happened? insane. Because, I mean, like, we went to Baltimore, you know, we went to the New York, um, we went to like, you know, some of the like the smaller conventions here in Austin, like South by Southwest gaming convention. It's not like super huge or anything, but it's, you know, a decent size, much smaller in Baltimore or like the, you know, New York Comic Con size. And we also went to like the classic game fest, which is even smaller. It's kind of like the size of like maybe SPX up in Bethesda. Yeah. Um, and so, no, it's it's not the same if you think about it. You, when you go to New York Comic Con and you go to these other convention centers, there's people there for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So you get the people who are at New York Comic Con, oh, I'm here for all the gaming stuff or the show floor. That's all they're there for. You know, you got the other people who are, are just there for the artist alley and meeting some of the people. And then you got the ones like me and Galen where we're there for every single aspect of it. So, like, the gaming, the show floor, the artist alley, the any of the events the panels all that stuff so we're there for everything like that's the whole point of going there in the first place so when you go to blizzcon though all these people are here are for the one common goal of blizzard games so it's a little bit different it's not like oh i'm here for the the artists out there the, the, there's none of that it's just i'm here because it's for blizzard games just straight up and and that's it so when they have like an opening and a closing cinema that's how crazy it is like None of the cons, like other cons, have that kind of stuff. It's just doors open, you walk in, doors are closing, you walk out. That's pretty much it. Right. Um, right. Here they have like events. Um, they have some crazy, just crazy free stuff that we didn't realize when we were there. So they got this thing in World of Warcraft called the Dark Moon uh, Fair. And so they pretty much try to recreate that within the real life world, as you would say, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, right. It's it's kind of crazy. Like you go in there and there's like there's a Hearthstone tavern and then there's uh you know weird picture gift things that you can take where like the background's moving and you can pick stuff and it's completely oh, free. You know you can get your cool. face painted and if you want it to. There's like book huh. signings and stuff like that. There's uh 
multiple panel stages for some reason and random places was kind of odd but they had it was well, well, oh i don't know well, it's pretty well, crazy yeah no i bet like what was your favorite thing like there um i don't know i mean the ceremonies and the panels were pretty cool because you get to like hear like their stories, especially because because it's the twenty fifth anniversary. So they were talking about look like the look back, looking back at the blizzard. Um, they recently uh, just picked up uh, one of the co founders that had retired, and now he's like back in the company, um, which is kind of cool. I guess maybe because Chris Medson, he is retiring from Blizzard, well, pretty much retiring from everything he probably might come back because he is the voice of you know thrall and king varian but oh yeah <laughs> yeah so who knows? Knows. but yeah it's it was kind of cool that they had that um one of the weirdest things though was the was diablo's uh 20th anniversary they had a free event outside of the convention center happy they're bringing and... back the necromancer shout out to the <laughs> oh yeah we get to play yep. that actually pretty that was pretty intense. The, the necromancer. That was fun. Not that like the witch doctor. If people think it is, it's a, it is a misconception. That's what they said at the con too. It's they were talking about this passive active thing. So like the pets are active. They actually do things for you. They just don't randomly assault things. And you're like, why? Where, where did my gargantuan go? Where, where's my zombie mm-hmm. dogs at? Oh, they're still in the corner from the last monster I, I accidentally walked past and didn't care about. So no, you actually control your stuff in the necromancer. But yeah, the Diablo thing. Um, they had like Diablo style, like beer, crafted beer. Of course, we couldn't get any because they closed it at 10 because of the uh, licenses in there, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we were able to get the mugs at least. So we were like, yes, let's get the mugs. Oh, like, I just want the mugs. The people there were like, you guys just want the mugs? Everyone's lines like, yeah, like, just give us the mugs. We'll buy the mugs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh. And so they started just selling mugs with no beer in it, but who cares? The mugs. Yeah, are we great. had to wait in line. Like you had to wait in line for hours to try to get the like special Diablo beer, and but the mugs actually said Diablo 20th anniversary on them. So like when we finally get to the front, they're like, oh, we can't sell alcohol past 10, and we're like, but we want the mugs because it says Diablo on it, and they're yeah. like, you want to pay ten dollars for a mug, and we're like, yes, that's actually a good price for us. a mug. That's actually a really yeah. nice price for a mug. Yes, because it yes. says Diablo 20th anniversary, so it's a collector's item. So everyone was freaking out. We're like, please just sell yeah. us the mug. Like, just sell the mug. And they're like, just okay. The <laughs> and like you couldn't you couldn't buy the beer other other than that. Like they 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 went on sale at the uh 20th anniversary. They started selling the bill uh, the beer the next day, of course. Um but you couldn't get it throughout the entire time. This brewery truck has been there the whole time, but they weren't selling the the 20th anniversary Diablo stuff until like the the time of the event, which is weird because it's funny because they had a uh, uh, Hodar, the, the dude from uh, yeah yeah yeah, what's Game his real name? Christian something? Yeah, he was DJing yeah, he's a, and he's stuff. He's a DJ. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, it was kind of we're like, well, that's kind of unexpected. Like, we no one knew this was him, even coming though. up. It yeah, was... it was kind of hard to hear it where we're at in the line and stuff. It's kind of like a so concerts like... are like. In the front of uh, BlizzCon, they have, like, where the entrance is, they park all these food trucks. And so they kind of had, like, the party going on there. Like, they have all these food trucks in the front, which is kind of nice because, like, at other cons, like New York Comic Con, like, you have to walk or get a taxi to go eat somewhere if you want, like, real food, like, not the shitty food that's in the con. Yeah, that's what New so York that was So <laughs> that was one thing that I thought was really nice about BlizzCon, that all these food trucks, and, you know, it's an opportunity for them to make money, but no other con I've been to had that, because then you don't have to eat that crap food. You can go out and eat, like, real food, and it's right there, really close. I also really like the opening ceremony a lot, because I mean, like, you can watch it on TV, but, like, to actually be there when it's they're announcing insane. certain things. Yeah, everyone going yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. when they announced, uh, uh, what's their name? Sombra. It was From funny because they started a, a video, and they're like, oh, a look back at Blizzard. Like, everyone's sitting in the big hall, and they just have a video playing. And then all of a sudden, it starts glitching and glitching, yeah, right. and er- everyone starts screaming and going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like because it's sombra hacking the thing but yeah but when you're actually there and everyone's screaming and freaking out because they know what's going on it, that was, like, what's that going was on cool. and they're really just like um, really young. it's gotta be sombra <laughs> another yeah. point that james made to me about blizzcon is 
he was like, think about it. What other gaming company does this? Yeah. No, um, none. Exactly. None. Can you so, think of another gaming company that throws a big convention like this? No. Does, Nint does Nintendo no have their own convention? No. 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 What? None of these guys do. They, they there's a lot of stuff, does. like yeah. really, like not right. But um, that's for another day. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, someone who you know isn't necessarily like a super fan of Blizzard, but I mean respects it. Like, w what would you say for someone who's like, oh, maybe I'll go to that? But like, do you have to be like a super fan in the Blizzard, like James, to like appreciate it, enjoy it, like want to make no, the trip to Anaheim? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you need to like video games, and you need to like playing blizzard games I do you mean, have to have like a you don't even do you have to have like a base level of understanding of blizzard games or? yeah yeah I think so. like if you yeah. know the titles you, you or at least to... played yeah. some of them for a little bit or know someone that plays them and but you're a gamer yourself it's not that hard i mean it, it'd be kind of cool for someone who's never like truly like got a hold of blizzard games as as much like they play a couple here and there and they know a lot of people and you just like go with them to the blizzcon you'll probably be a little bit more inspired by like what they actually I, out, like the output of the games and what they've done i would disagree though if if you don't play blizzard games i would not go because first of all it's extremely expensive the ticket um the tickets are incredibly difficult to get there are people that have tried to get them for like 10 years in a row, like every time there's a BlizzCon and they never get a ticket. Because to put it in perspective, BlizzCon only sells like 26,000 tickets, which mm. sounds like a lot. But in perspective, New York Comic Con sells 100,000 tickets. Yeah. yeah. More it's, than that. I think it was like 170,000. Like so. It's really hard to get a ticket, but actually getting the ticket and going there, what's really cool about it is it's not as crowded. Like, you know how New York Comic Con, you can't even move. It takes you hours to get from one end to another of New York Comic Con. Like, you're just shuffling your feet. Mm -hmm. The only time I felt like that at BlizzCon was when, like, the opening ceremony, because everyone's in the same hall. Yeah, everybody's having a hard time getting out. But otherwise, you, know, you could walk freely around the show floor. There's plenty of room to walk around. Yeah. I never felt overwhelmed. Huge or gap. That, between the... Yes. That was something I really liked. Another thing that I've never experienced at a con is there is a definite ratio of more males to females there are not very many women there. There are women there, but not there. So New York Comic Con, you want to go to the bathroom and you're a woman, you're going to wait for a long ass time. BlizzCon, <laughs> if you want to go to the bathroom, you just walk right in and go. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's when Caitlin yeah. knew. That's when Caitlin knew. <laughs> male, yeah, the male, for her. The, it was the, the awesome. The restrooms <laughs> are long. One, I had a customer that told me a tip. He was like, Go outside, go to one of the hotels, go to the bathroom there, and walk back in. It's faster. <laughs> I was so, like, so, oh, that's so, kind of insane. Go, go to the I've, bar, I've... buy one of those $10 mugs, and then just go. <laughs> yeah. Another, <laughs> another thing that it is definitely worth going at least once if you're into blizzard games it it was a unique experience definitely worth it oh and they also have the uh the world championships there which i'm not Free. into esports e at all <laughs> but when you walk into those halls and see where they hold the tournament halls it is legit like i've never seen anything like it because when you watch it online all they're showing you is like the screens, like the gameplay. They're not mm -hmm. showing you this big hall and they, they show like the StarCraft tournament and they're way up in the rafters in these tiny little boxes so they can't hear each other mm -hmm. or, or see hear anything. anything. It's like sound like, what, what is this? It's like a real sporting event. It, it's pretty crazy to Oh, just no, no. See. ESPN is like giving like updates now on esports. Yeah, I, I'm not well, into speak, speaking I of mean, esports, though. The one thing that they announced at this BlizzCon was the Overwatch League, 
Yeah, and that's one reason why I bought stock in Blizzard because I just feel like esports, like you know, might be the future for a lot of yeah, you know, gaming. You know, well, I what's kind of big? What's what's kind of crazy though is is Overwatch in itself. Like the game has. The game didn't even have a tournament yet, and last BlizzCon because they like pretty much announced it. Like you know, I think it was last year, or the year before. They were just like, oh, you know, Overwatch is coming out, and eventually the game came out. And all Blizzard games, for some reason, they have this thing called like the, the Road to BlizzCon. So they have these mini tournaments that mm-hmm. will eventually get winners from each different like regions or co- or countries and stuff like that. That eventually will go to the finals, which is at BlizzCon only. And oh. for each game, and this is the first time they had the Overwatch game, and I think the numbers were like they have they have like twenty million people or something like that playing this game that only been out for like a short span of a time. While you got these other game franchises been out for years, and they're pulling like the same numbers, <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's wow. kind of like kind of weird. But it was it's pretty it was pretty insane. Uh, you can hear the people in the Overwatch arena when they're watching the games, like just cheering and it was loud. Like, you can hear it through like the entire convention center. Like you just like hear them like, like, just, like just lose it. You're like, man, there's something going on over there. Why is everyone like screaming their heads off? And, and, Cause it's, you know, this team versus this team and they're, they're de- demolishing them and they're about to win the cup. So it was kind of insane. Like, um, and the weird thing though, is the overwatch thing was kind of odd. The overwatch thing was done in a way, like in the Olympics, it was countries versus countries, where like here's a storm or like warcraft hearthstone those kind of things it's more like it's just like a player or a team and it, it doesn't really matter where they come from like they had multiple teams from different countries you know in these tournaments but like the overwatch one was like a, it was it was called a world cup versus just oh they're just just, just a the world championship blah 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 like they call it a world club because they actually had country versus country versus country like that kind of deal um and it's just weird that they're that's like what they're right, trying gonna... to do with the overwatch league though that's the point yeah well the overwatch league is gonna be players. yeah overwatch league is gonna be players. weird they're drafting players and it's gonna be like like a major league sport that you would see in america so it would be like cities have their own overwatch team is what they're gonna try to push out for and you win like you know the well i don't know why they always call these stuff world series when they win it when it's really just an american sport but you know <laughs> they're yeah, trying to pull that off that i'm always turned off by esports because i hope that these things don't get turned into you know these jocks who are like yeah i'm the best and yeah you know, they're i like yeah. i'm gonna play overwatch i don't play video games but i'm gonna play this because i can make money and it's like i don't oh, want to yeah. hear yeah like they the have corruption this little, and spoil of they gaming. have this little uh this little story like this documentary at blizzcon and you could watch it and it was about like esports and overwatch and we sat in for part of it because we wanted to see a panel right after it and they're like yeah. showing this guy and they're interviewing him and he's like I used to play hockey and then I got an injury and I heard about this Overwatch thing and I realized I could do that. And so I started playing and I'm in it and, and I'm like, I don't want to hear a story like that. I want to hear a story about someone who's like, I've played games my entire life and this is my dream. I don't want to hear about a douchebag who's like, I used to play hockey and now <laughs> I don't. Like, <laughs> I've never heard no. of games until... Oh, I got this injury. Oh, I'm the same person that used to make fun of people who were playing this game that I now play an eSport of. Like, come on. Really? Like, yeah. get out of yeah. here. <laughs> I feel yeah. like it's the it's the people. That's what I'm afraid of is people who made fun of us, you know, when we were young. It's oh, going to be it those, is, those is, douchers who are going to be in the eSport. God, it is so easy to, like, be a nerd nowadays. Yeah, yeah I remember, I remember having like problem. crap thrown at me like in high school and everything. But now it's like somebody brings in like a Pikachu hat. They're like, "Oh man, I love Pikachu!" Love. Yeah. I know. And, and that's what's yeah. and this is what's even dumber now. Like now, like when you're a gamer these days, right? The the people who aren't really gamers or the people who aren't really into comics, you know, or movie buffs, any of those kind of people, and you know, they made fun of you throughout your whole life and now they're getting into it they have like a new word for you instead of calling you a nerd or a geek or whatever they're calling you an elitist 
mm-hmm. or this, like you're a hardcore gamer or you're an elitist. You're just a jerk because you you think you're so good at it. It's like, no, there's a reason why some of these people have this kind of hate because you already put the hate in them when they were young. So now mm-hmm. that they're older and you're trying to impede on what they were doing that made them who they are and what these people are just like trampling over, that's why they get really, really pissed at these people. They're just like, like this is my kind of thing. Why are you getting to it? I mean, it's 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 cool that hey, they want to get into it, but when they try to pull it off like it's their own thing and like pulling away from the actual gaming community and like, oh, let's turn into this like yuppity whatever thing. It's like, no, that's no, you're you're just now destroying it. Like it, I don't know. It's kind of pathetic in a way. That's yeah. What, so yeah, that's my fear for esports. Uh, another thing about BlizzCon, Blizzard, if you're listening. This was the one thing that was extremely frustrating about BlizzCon is that they say they're going to have autographs and things like that, but they don't tell you who's autographing. They don't tell you where or when. Uh, They'll just mm. be like, here's an autograph. And you're like, well, who's signing? (laughs) Yeah, the the board is just empty. (laughs) Yeah, that that was a really annoying thing because we went – in thinking, oh, like the big Blizzard guys will have a signing. No, they don't. They don't ever come out on the show floor. They don't ever do any signings. But then like in front of different areas, like Overwatch area or Diablo, they'll have a little table and people signing. And me and James, they don't even say who they are. Me and James are like, well, who the hell are they? Why would we wait in line? The lines weren't long, so we waited anyway. But we asked, so we asked each person, we're like, who are you? What did you do on the game? And they'll like tell you like, oh, I'm a developer. Oh, I did this. I did that. But Blizzard really needs to have a sign that just says who it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not waiting in line for no damn reason. <laughs> and, they, and what was also annoying is Blizzard even had an app for BlizzCon. Why couldn't they have put the signings on there? I, I don't get it. That was... That's one thing about BlizzCon that is very terrible. Very terrible. Just signing. Like, you know, it's people are there for, they're there to see, like, the original team. Like, that's the whole point it, in some aspects. If you're going to be doing some signings, that's what you should have. Like, they should be signing themselves. I mean, granted, they apparently, as I hear from, from other people, they're like, yeah, they'll be on the show floor sometimes, like, at some of these, like, the actual places where you actually play the games like you can play the character like like the necromancer you're like oh let's play necromancer you wait in the line and if you guys ever go to blizzcon and you see the line it's not as daunting as you think at first we were like holy crap this line is super long just to play the necromancer and it only took like 10 minutes to walk through the whole line but it looked like a line that you would see and go that's gonna be like an hour or two it's not somehow they're fast i i when I didn't realize we like until after we're like, man, this is actually, this is actually really fast. Like well, and... I've also never seen so many computers in one yeah. day in my life. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of computers. hundreds of computers for each game title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like you, you walk by Diablo and you're not really, if you're not paying attention, there's probably like 50 computers per row and there's like 10 or 12 rows. You're just like, yeah, that's a lot of computers, but yeah, it's, it's pretty fast. So if you're there and you're like, oh, I don't want to wait in this line, just wait in the line. It's it's fast. Like the Heroes of the Storm, to play the brand new characters, it took no effort to get in the line. We went in the line, we went through it with, I mean, they had a match playing from mm-hmm. one of the tournaments. And it, it was only like 10 minutes in the game, you're already playing. Like you're at the computer already sitting down. You're like, oh, that was pretty kind of quick. Like, But yeah, signings, they should be like, they need to be there. Because I know that they do signings for like almost every release of their games so like overwatch every warcraft expansion uh expansions for starcraft and stuff like that they 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 go to like the local like best buys or targets that's near uh their uh headquarters in irvine and they do signings like the original people and other people that you know who are like oh i'm just the developer oh i'm game tester and stuff they do that but like at the blizzcon i was expecting like the same kind of deal they would also be signed along these other people but i've never seen the only time i saw any of the big guys were was at the panels that's about it <laughs> yeah right. right so i was like oh man what the <laughs> like how am i supposed <laughs> to get this dude to sign uh, you know a 25 year old book 
Warcraft ones. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Manual. Also, also, it's depressing because, you know, like I said before, it's so hard to get tickets that people have tried, like, for the past 10 BlizzCons that have existed and they've never gotten tickets. So people come from all over the world. So for some people, this is a once in a lifetime experience that will never happen for them again. And to not have those people signing is or a even, big letdown. Yeah, or, 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 or the ability to like meet and greet and like at least say something to them. Like, oh man, great job, blah, blah, blah. You're inspirational. I played your game since I was like 10, blah. None of that interaction, really. I mean, because all the all the people that were like signing like the Diablo games, like I walked up to them asking stuff about Diablo one and two, and you know they didn't. No, they were all current, like, current yeah, developers. They're all current. They're not... so they had like no clue what I was talking about half the time. They're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, Diablo one, where you collect the books, kind of like the reason why Diablo three has those books that you pick up. Like, <laughs> is that going <laughs> to be in the Diablo one anniversary?" version that you play inside Diablo 3 like are you going to be able to do the same thing like man they didn't understand <laughs> so it's kind of hard it's like I kind of want to talk to the guy who actually made Diablo and ask him because he'll probably tell me like oh yeah we're going to put those in there you know but now it's kind of weird I mean it was cool because I got to see at least the the senior game designer for uh Here's the Storm he was signing by by chance I was just like I mean oh, wow. he's, only been, he's only been in the company for who knows how long, but obviously he wasn't there for a long time. But it kind of sucked though because like one of the people I wouldn't want to meet for uh, Hero Storm was uh, Dustin. It would have been cool to see that dude. He's like the main dude. He's like one of the guys that worked on StarCraft, but he does. But again, now. but yep. again, when they're yeah. sitting at the table, you didn't even know who anyone was because there was exactly. no signage. Oh, that that I, that's weird that they wouldn't think to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I agree odd. with you. Yeah, that but was I'm the glad... only. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad you guys seem like you had like a a fun time. Yeah, I mean, um, just going there and experiencing it, it was already in itself really, really great. That was just like the only thing that kind of sucked was just that. Like, uh, come on, like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I guess it yeah. can't be perfect, you know. Everything else was yeah. was great. Yeah. Well, we've been here for a little while <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I really, sorry I really about that no no it's cool you guys were i'm glad to talk to you about it. i'm glad i got to speak to you, with you guys again you know it's always great to speak with you and everything and thanks for all the tips and advice and everything and if anyone's ever interested in going to blizzcon or anything it definitely seems like it's the thing to do so uh i hope you guys have a great night and everything and uh, i'm definitely gonna have to go to austin sometime soon again to hang out with you guys again because i had such a blast last time and i get to see like your new house or whatever because you have like yeah. what, 50, 50 guest bedrooms now. <laughs> no, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, you know, she was she was telling me about like the the, the guest house next to the guest house that you guys <laughs> have in your in your backyard. <laughs> We got you guest know. houses above it, below it, inside yeah. of it, like Inception. <laughs> yeah, you got your you got your your carport and your and your airport in the backyard. Yep. Like I'm gonna be turning on That's the TV. Hello, Yeah. Personal zoo. Yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be turning turning on the TV in the in the box that I live in that's built by like you know wood in the 1970s and disappointment. <laughs> and it's, I'm gonna turn on like Rich and the Famous, like. And here we are in Austin, Texas, <laughs> where the Fahies, for their ten dollars, have built a mansion. <laughs> the the Fahey Ranch was made one year ago. <laughs> and once once you're done taking your cruise ship through the swimming pool, you get to see the wild horses <laughs> run through run through their front yard as is tradition. Well, I can tell you this. When we went to the Grand Canyon and we were driving back, there was an area that was like 500 and something acres for only 50,000. And I was like, 50,000 yeah. for 520 something acres? And what? you get to see the Fahey cat enjoy his morning breakfast of caviar and cod. Caitlin <laughs> cannot handle this right now. I can't handle it. Your voices. Even better. Your voices that you do are just too good. 
And as a special surprise, in one of their guest houses, they have Bear Grylls. Mr. Grylls, <laughs> I how, how, how are you enjoying your time at the Fahey Ranch? Well, after I'm done eating my morning breakfast, I like to eat my own feces <laughs> as I try to survive. Austin, Texas. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Grills. Now, now, after after I've eaten my morning breakfast, I get to see the lion that the Fahis <laughs> have bought and imported all the way from Africa. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm getting way too way too into this. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be surprised. I think like yeah. America has like what more tigers or lions than the actual yeah. wild or some weird. Well, like... you guys, you guys have enough income to like create a friggin' like lion sanctuary in your backyard now. <laughs> no. You know why stop at the house cat? <laughs> At first, they were wondering if they should have put it in, in Persian tile, but they settled on gold. <laughs> a gold-plated lion sanctuary for the Fahis. Because when you are this rich, there is nothing but the best as your only option. All right, guys. Have a great night. Yep. All right. All you right. too. See you. Bye.